This early morning, let's explore Yong Jia Xuan Jue's Song of Enlightenment and then meditate. This is Lama Jigme Gyatso of the Buddha Joy Meditation School. Welcome to Meditate Like a Jedi, which is brought to you by the kind folks who support this channel on Patreon. This morning, we could chant and meditate and enjoy a lesson or two. But first, if you love Star Wars and you wish to meditate as transformatively as Yoda on Dagobah under the guidance of Qui-Gon Jinn, be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell. Good news. The moment you have a specific question about Buddhist meditation or Buddhist philosophy or how to apply them to your life, simply type the question in the chat window on the right-hand side of the screen. I'll be happy to answer that question for you. Let's chant. People do not recognize the wish fulfilling jewel. Living intimately with Nidandagata Gadaba. It operates her sight, hearing, smell, taste, sensation, and awareness. And all of these are empty yet not empty. So Literally, a wish-fulfilling jewel is pretty much like the ancient Indian version of Aladdin's lamp. It's used as a metaphor to describe our Buddha, or Tathagata, nature, or essence. So, <clears throat> we don't want to get stuck in a superstitious view of Buddha nature. What if Buddha nature was just an Iron Age way of describing the two branches of our autonomic nervous system? The sympathetic nervous system, which is wired so that during each inhalation we could notice vulnerably, passively, viscerally, and randomly, and call this mindfulness. And the parasympathetic nervous system, which is wired in such a way so that during each exhalation, we could physically relax and mentally release, and call that meditation. The first phase of this, the sympathetic nervous system, operates our perceptions. And now we have a reference to the Diamond Sutra. And all of these are empty, yet not empty. Well, what the hell does that mean? The South Indian Buddhist saint Nagarjuna taught of the two truths, which is a poetic way of referring to both mindfulness as well as meditation, to both noticing and releasing. Sadly, some people in their enthusiasm clutch onto the idea of releasing so much that they forget to notice, all the while oblivious to the fact that just as we need both our inhalation and our exhalation to live, likewise we need both mindfulness and meditation to thrive and be happy, healthy, well-adjusted adults no less Buddhas. And so, empty yet not empty is a way of remembering meditation and mindfulness. Both are important. Some people would tell you you don't want to fall into nihilism, but that's more of a pseudo-intellectual explanation. We don't want to be so 
over-focused on release that we forget to notice. Remember, the first of the seven enlightenment factors is mindfulness. Together. The ray shining from this perfect wish for feeling jewel have no have the form of no form at all. The beneficial effects of our Buddha nature. Even though the beneficial effects of our Buddha nature can be noticed, it's important to allow ourselves to also release them. Notice them during each in-breath, release them during each uh, exhalation. It's natural to be frightened that after that exhalation will be gone, but practice tells us, no, there's, it's still there during the next inhalation. As long as we are alive and uh, we are not brain dead, we have access to our Buddha nature. We read, Clarify the five eyes and develop the five powers. This is not intellectual work, just realize, just know. So I'm going to show you, share with you some, something that is remarkably ironic. I know what it's like to be a pseudo-intellectual. I was one for many, many years. And as a pseudo intellectual, I would, I would read this these four lines. I would read the second two lines, that remind me this is not intellectual work, and then I would ignore that line and immediately try to find, the decode these top two lines, this top couplet, as if to find the, pseudo, as if to pseudo spiritually decode it. Not unlike uh, Orphan Annie's decoder ring uh, uh, scene that we watched during Christmas Story that came out in the late 80s. Um, while fun, it's not productive. What then is productive? Just notice as we breathe in just relax as we breathe out. That is the key to all attainments, real and imaginary. It is not difficult to see images in the mirror, but who can take hold of the moon and water? So, clearly, the function of a mirror is to reflect. That's child's play. But... And you know what also can reflect the, the calm surface of a body of water, be it a lake or a puddle, could reflect the full moon at midnight in a quite, in quite a dazzling manner. However, when we try to use our thumb and index finger to pick that moon up off of the top of the surface of water, all we are left with is moisten the fingertips. The moon remains both in the sky and its reflection remains on the water. And yes, we could play games and say, but what if I put the water in the basin in the basin and then I just pick the basin up, blah, blah, blah. It's a foolish, foolish thing to try to brush pseudo-intellectually, competitively brush aside a teacher's um, simile or metaphor. What is the teacher's point here? That although perception is easy, grasping is an impossibility. Now, the trick, according to the previous sentence, is not to realize this intellectually, but to experience it viscerally. The intelligent response to this is how? How do we experience it viscerally in a deeply transformative way? Simple. When we sit in meditation, as we, as we shall do in just a few minutes, we give ourselves permission to vulnerably notice as we breathe in, 
During each exhalation, we give ourselves permission to physically relax and mentally release. This trains us to get better and better and better at letting go. The goal of the path is not to stop perceiving things externally or internally. The goal is not to stop perceiving sights, sounds, sensations, flavors, scents, or the like. The goal is not to stop emoting, intending, reasoning, recalling, or imagining. The goal is to allow these things to happen in a mindful and transcendent way. Noticing as we breathe in, relaxing as we breathe out. Well, what's the big deal with that? Doing so makes us the peaceful, loving person that our dog already thinks we are. I need to take a moment to blow my nose. Please excuse me. And I'm back. Let's turn our attention to the latest iteration of Dzogchen Tantric Gondros. Uh, meditation text or satana if you prefer Sanskrit. Our first chant is going to help us to center our energy. It's known as Lama Kieno, or calling the teacher as from afar. And as you'll see, we see two sets of Buddhas. We see the uh, uh, a pale pair of Buddhas, a male Buddha and a female Buddha, sitting in Tantric Union, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. And above their heads, we see um, another pair of Buddhas. So that's what we're referring to here. This becomes a metaphor for the Dharma practitioner. And this becomes a metaphor of the teacher and the teachings. Let's chant. Let's chant this three times. May my reliance upon teachers, examples, instructions, and students bring Lama Kundu Zangpo Yabyum to this crown. May my reliance upon teachers, example, instructions, and students bring Lama Kundu Zangpo Yabyum to this crown. May my reliance upon teachers, example, instructions, and students bring Lama Kundu Zangpo Yabyum to this crown. We come now to Trek Cho's technique, wherein we slice through clinging. This is the practice of mindfulness and meditation or awareness and letting go, which is also known as Zen or Chan or Jhana or Mahamudra or Ati Yoga or Dzogchen. Let us <clears throat> emulate this photograph of a wooden statue. The legs are crossed comfortably uh, without being in the full lotus position releasing not from the knees, but from the hips. The hands are resting comfortably in the lap, adjacent to the lower belly, which helps the energy. The shoulders are neither all the way forward nor all the way back. There, a gentle Mona Lisa smile dances upon the corners of the mouth, the apples of the cheeks, and the crow's feet of the eyes. There is vertical traction between the tush and the head as we breathe in we can silently and mentally recite the sensory verb watch as we um, exhale 
we can silently and mentally recite the hyphenated verb relaxing. There is no need to label our perceptions or experiences. We can simply let them play out, sometimes in the background, sometimes in the foreground.
Having completed our first silent meditation, we turn now to four uh, contemplations. Known in Tibet is um, So we're going to play with a rhetorical question and just explore the pervasive nature of stress, remembering that everyone, everyone who's been into adulthood knows that there are times when we endure what we don't like, when we uh, don't get what we want, when we want it, or we don't want to keep what we like for as long as we'd like to. These are the basic parameters of stress. And we're wired to feel that way. This is part of our evolutionary programming to keep us alive. It's just not always pleasant. So we explore this not to lament, not to feel bad for ourselves, not to beat ourselves up, but just to recognize that this is a common denominator for all humanity. During the inhalation, we silently and mentally recite the noun stress. And during the exhalation, we silently and mentally recite the remainder of the rhetorical question, how all feel. And we now look for causality. We do not do this to victim blame. We do this to learn. Reality leaves a trail and noticing causality can sometimes help us to sidestep unnecessary suffering. And sometimes it can just help us realize what are the, some of the things we do to exacerbate the suffering that we already are enduring. So let's just play with this rhetorical question. Stress, what causes? I, let us now contemplate the veritable panacea of impermanence. This, how changing? Remember, these are rhetorical questions. It's not our job to try to answer them. So we're not trying to lie to ourselves about what we feel, about what we're enduring. We're trying to explore that using meditation and contemplation to cope with stress can, although inconvenient, can be remarkably productive. Therefore, rendering even the greatest inconvenience beneficial. So how this opportunity, precious, this how precious. When the four thoughts that turn the mind of the teaching are viewed through a lens of patriarchy, viewed through a lens of that makes us rigid, fearful, and controlling, it uses fear to motivate us. 
um, when it's seen through the lens of yin, the lens of being flexible, loving, and laid back, these four contemplations transcend fear, which neuroscience says is the key to love, for fear and love are antithetical. For our first exercise, we're going to perform recitations to train the neural pathways of empathy and enthusiasm to transcend the jealousy of competitiveness and the self-clinging of pride. Let's perform this uh, for 16 repetitions. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging. By relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging. By relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging. By relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. May I liberate all beings from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging by relying on the Buddha's example, instructions, and students. Let's take a moment to rest the mind.
All right, let's move on. We're now going to play with a, an imaginary offering uh, to help us to transcend our greedy tendencies. I'm going to play with a gesture that we're going to explore in the next page. The grass sprinkled with perfume and spread with flowers, a great mountain for lads and then moon. Seen as a Buddha land, and often thus may all beings enjoy such pure lands. Idam Idam Guru Randam Dalagam Niriada Yami 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 Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy, Idum guru and the mandala come near at a yummy. There is a myth. Oh, one quick before I blather on. Let us rest in mind's not graspable nature. There is a myth that elitists share that one must first complete a gondro before one can practice tantra. The great irony is that gondro is a complete practice in itself. When practiced correctly, it can create enlightenment within seven years or seven quarters or seven months or seven fortnights or seven weeks or even seven days. We now come to Tokal's leap over the confusion of clinging and competition that we might better practice love and letting go, which is also known as mantra meditation. Consider, if you will, this photograph of a wooden statue depicting two figures sporting in tantric union. This could be described in Sanskrit as Vajra Sarva Karma Mudra, this could be described in Tibetan as Dorje Sampa Yabyum, or in English as Diamond Mind Mother and Father. The iconography of this Yadam, or archetype of enlightenment, functions merely to organize eight figures of speech necessary for transformative contemplation, therefore, rendering obsolete any blind faith or superstitional superstition in real or imagined entities. Because grasping tightly to superstition in the name of peace is a lot like making love in the name of virginity. Going to, let's chant Dilgo Kensei's exploration of the iconography of the archetype.
Avash yourself a great space unattainable to grasping like the moon in water. I must I must warn you, I've made subtle uh what's it called adaptations to this text. As a emanation of Samanta Bandra, you are the main deity, the union of wisdom and method. A heroic being white in color, holding Vajra and Bell, embracing the consort of annoyed innate luminosity. The union of bliss and emptiness and adorned with silk and jeweled ornaments. From the state of the unfabricated nature, wrathful yet unmarked types appear vividly at his crown, and the peaceful yet unmarked types appear at the main deity's heart. At his heart, upon discs of sun, at his heart, upon discs of sun and moon, is the syllable who is a syllable who is surrounded by the mantra mala. From which light, radi- light rays radiate, they then return in devotion, love, and blessing, performing two kinds of benefit for oneself and others, and pacifying cruelty as well as competition and clingings. Obscurations of awareness into space. The entire outer and inner world arises as fortunate and ungraspable, as deity, mantra, and wisdom of the countless wrathful and peaceful yet dumb archetypes. Let us explore for a moment the meaning of the mantra. You don't have to memorize it, just get a basic feel for the positive nature of it. Om is the supreme expression of invocation. Vajra Salva ensure your Samaya vow remains intact. Vajra Salva, be steadfast in your care of me. Grant me in qualified contentment and hence everything that is noble within me. Look after me, lavish me with all the accomplishments, and in everything I do ensure my mind is virtuous. The whom syllable symbolizes Vajra Salva's wisdom mind. These represent the four immeasurables, the four empowerments, the four joys, and the four kayas. What joy, what the... What joy, blessed one, who embodies all the Tata Goddess, Vajra Sattva, never abandon me. Grant me the realization of Vajra nature, great commitment, keeping being, I am one with you. Please, sorry, increase my wisdom and pacify my hindrances. As we chant the mantra, I could feel as if diamond rays were emitting from a thumbnail size horizontal hundred syllable mantra rosary at our heart. Lavishing all circumstances, bodies, relationships, and months with purification. Good fortune, health, love, and wisdom centered and spontaneous. So, the first, we're going to begin with the middle ways dance of the conventional and the ultimate. Let us review the meaning of emptiness. As we relax into our exhalation, whatever we notice during our previous inhalation could feel as non-graspable as a vast empty void. Like the illusion of the infinite astro sky on a beautiful cloudless morn, which, although compelling to the eye, is not graspable to the hand. Let's bring our experience of the circumstantial into the path of letting go. We see before us an artist's rendering of a Buddha, of a Buddha couple in a Buddha paradise, which serves as a wonderful uh, and. And the paradise is comprised of light, which serves as a wonderful simile for letting go. 
How is it that as we inhale our circumstantial stresses and the causes could appear quite vivid, yet as we relax into our exhalation they could feel as non graspable as a real or imagined paradise or vati of light? So this is the only kind of challenging thing. The question surfaces, how does one transcend mindless mantra recitation and instead practice transformative mantra meditation? And the answer is twofold. Number one, during the inhalation, silently and mentally recite the wisdom-inducing rhetorical question that is the synopsis of the previous page pages chant. And number two, during the exhalation, physically relax as best you can into the recitation of this mantra. So this is a big mantra. Typically, personally, I'm asked, when I'm asked what the difference is between a mantra and a dharani, I'd say a mantra you can complete in one breath, a dharani requires several breaths. Over the decades, I've come to practice this in one breath. The first time you look at it, it could feel overwhelming, and that's understandable. Be gentle with yourself. Give yourself permission to have a learning curve. And within a week or two, you could feel very comfortable with it. So at a snail's pace, I'm going to share the pronunciation. Here's the trick. Pronounce the consonants like they're English and the vowels like you are a semester one Spanish student. So... Om Vaj Ra Satva Samaya Ma Nu Palaya Vaj Ra Satva Veno Patishta. This H is aspirant, it's not the, it's ta. Trito me bava Suto sho me bava. Supo show me bava Anurakto me bava Sarva siddhi me prayacha Sarva karma sucha me chittam shri ya kuru hum ha 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 ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Ma Me Muncha Vajra Bhava Mahasamaya Sattva Ahum Pe. So, once again, give yourself permission to have a learning curve. Perfectionism does not serve anybody well. Om Vajra Sava Zamaya Manu Balaya Vajra Sava Dveno Patishta Darira Me Bhava Sutokaya Me Bhava Supokaya Me Bhava Anuraka Me Bhava Sarva Siri Me Paracha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Sitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ahahaha Oh Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Muncha Vajra Bhava Mahasamaya Sarva Aum Be By the way, it's my intention to, after this, uh, this morning's live stream is concluded, to make this available for download. All my downloads are free. Everything I do is free. Um, the link will be available in the description area below the video. Sarva karma sucha me sitam shriyam kuru hu. Ha 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 ha. Bhagavan. 
Sarvatat Kata Vajra Mame Mujra Vajra Bhava Mahasamaya Sarva Ahumbe O Vajra Sarva Samaya Mando Palaya Vajra Sarva Taino Patishtara Drir Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Anuradu Me Bhava Sarva Sri Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Jitam Shriyam Kuruhu Ho oh, Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajarma Me Muncha Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sarva Ahude O oh, Vajra Sarva Samaya Mare Bhavaya Vajra Sarva Dveno Patishta Drena Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Sri Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Shi Chitam Shriyam Kuru Hu Ha Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mujra Vajra Bhava Mahasamaya Safa Ahumpe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Oopsie I should have changed the page Sorry guys, let's continue So now we're going to just play with a synopsis question. How lots seen yet? Void like Vati. We're now going to bring the experience of the physical into the path of letting go. How is it that as we inhale our physical stressors and their causes could feel quite sensual? Yet as we relax into our exhalation, they could feel as not graspable as a real or imagined archetypal yidam of light. Om Vajra Sava Samaya Mano Palaya Vajra Sava Dvino Patishtara Drira Me Bhava Suto Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Sri Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Jitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Muncha Vajra Bhava Vaha Samaya Sarva Ahumpe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manu Malaya Vajra Sava Dvena Patishta Andrira Me Bhava Sudosho Me Bhava Subosho Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Shacham Shriyam Kuru Hu Ahahahu Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mami Muncha Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sava Ahumpe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sava Dveno Patishta Drira Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Sri Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Jitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mujra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sarva Ahumpe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sava Dveno Patishta Drira Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Anurata Me Bhava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Jitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mujra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sava Ompe Now let's play closer attention, let us contemplate the rhetorical question in greater detail.
Now let us bring the experience of the interpersonal into the path of letting go. How is it that as we inhale the experience of communication stressors and their causes could be quite resounding? Yet as we relax into our exhalation, it could feel as non-graspable as a real or imagined mantra of light. Oh, Vaja Zavazamaya, Nunu Balaya, Vaja Satvatvino Patishta, Drido me bava, Sutosho, me bava, Sutosho, me bava, Anurto me bava, Sarvasene me prayacha, Sarva karma suchame, Chitam shu kuru hum, ha 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 ho, Bagavan, Zarvatatakata, Vaja mame muncha, Vaja bama, Mahasamaya, Safa ahumpe. Om Vaja Sava Samaya Mano Palaya Vaja Sava Teno Patish Da Drira Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Anoraka Me Bava Sarva Siddhi Me Parayacham Sarva Karma Siddhame Suchame Chittam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tatekata Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bava Maha Samaya Sava Ahumpe Om Vaja Sava Samaya Mano Palaya Vaja Sava Dvino Patishta Drira Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Suposho Me Bava Onorakno Me Bava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shriyam Kuru Hum Ahahaho Bhagavan Sarva Tattakada Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bava Maha Samaya Sava Ahumbe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Mano Palaya Vajra Sava Sattva Dveno Patishta Drido Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Suposho Me Bava Anorakta Me Bava Sarva Siddhi Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shriyam Kuru Hu Ahahaho Bhagavan Sarva Tattakata Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bava Maha Samaya Sava Ahumbe Let's now more deeply contemplate the rhetorical question, the wisdom-inducing rhetorical question. Let us bring our experience of the mental into the path of letting go. How is it that as we and who we could perceive all minds, functions, stressors, as that and their causes quite clearly? Yet as we relax into our exhalation, they could feel as non graspable as a real or imagined seasonable whom of light. Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manu Malaya Vajra Sava Dvino Padishta Drida Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Suposho Me Bava Anurakta Me Bava Sarva Sade Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Jitam Shriya Kuru Hum Ahahahu Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bava Maha Samaya Sava Ahumpe Om 
Om Vajrasavasumaya Manubalaya Vajrasavadvedva Patishta Drir me bhava sudosho me bhava sudosho me bhava anarakta me bhava sarvasare me parayacha sarva karma sutra me shitam shuyam kuru hum ha 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 ho bhagavan sarva tatakata vajrama me mudra vajra bhava mahasamaya sava ahumbe Om Vajrasavadvinopatishtadridamibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavasutoshomibhavas
Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Safa Dvena Pantishta Dhrida Me Bhava Satosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Anuragta Me Bhava Sarva Sade Me Prayacha Sarva Kana Suchane Chitam Shukuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tate Gada Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Safu Ahampe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Safa Dvino Patish Dan Drido Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Sarva Sede Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutra Me Chitam Shiyum Kuru Hum Ho 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 Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Bhama Mame Muncha Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Safu Ah Sarva Ahum Pe now we're going to just contemplate the concise rhetorical question. Let us bring the experience of the physical into the path of love. May all bodies of all beings now enjoy the beautiful, healthy, picked in Buddhist thought of the blissful body of a yidam of lore and archetype of enlightenment. So our job is not to visualize, our job is not to believe, our job is simply to wish and recite. Om Vajra Zava Zamaya Manu Balaya Vajra Zalva Dvena Patishta Drida Me Bhava Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Sarva Sede Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutra Me Chitam Shion Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mucha Vajra Bhava Ma Maha Sameya Sarva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Zafa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Zafa Dvena Patishta Andrir Me Bhava Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakto Me Bhava Sarva Zede Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutra Me Chitam Shion Kuru Hum Ha 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 Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sarva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Safa Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Safa Dvena Patishta Drida Me Bhava Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Zere Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutra Me Chitam Shion Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sarva Ahum Pe Om Vajra Sava Samaya Manu Palaya Vajra Sava Dvena Patish Dadrida Me Bhava Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Sate Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutra Me Chitam Shio Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajra Mame Mudra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sarva Ahum Pe now let us savor the six-syllable contemplation. Let us bring our experience of the interpersonal into the path of wishing love. May all relationships of all beings now be as joyful and loving. As our Buddha's communications symbolized by this hundred syllable mantra.
Let's see. I think I need some more water. I'll be right back. Please be patient. <laughs> Maha Sattva ya sattva samaya sattva ahumpe. Om Vajrasava Samaya Manubalaya Vajrasava Dveno Pantish Dam Drido Me Bava Sutosho Me Bava Suposho Me Bava Anurakto Me Bava Sarvasade Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shion Kuru Hum Ha 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 Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tate Kata Vajrama Me Muncha Vajrabhava Ma Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Safa Ahumpe Om Vajrasava Zamaya Manu Palaya Vajrasava Dvino Patishta Drida Me Bhava Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarvusri Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sutsan Sutsa Me Chitam Shion Kuru Hum Ahahaha Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajrama Me Muncha Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Safa Ahumpe Om Vajrasava Samaya Manu Palaya Vajrasava Dvino Patishta Dridu Me Bhava Suto Shio Me Bhava Supo Shio Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarva Siri Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shion Kuru Hum Ahahaha O Bhagavan Sarva Tata Kata Vajrabha Me Muncha Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sarva Ahumbe Om Vajrasava Samaya Manu Palaya Oopsie. Okay, so now let us contemplate the uh, six-syllable wishing love. Let's bring the experience of the mental into the path of wishing love. May all minds of all beings know be as peaceful and wise as our Buddha's mind. Symbolized by your one syllable mantra known as a city clay or bija mantra.
Om Vajrasava Sumaya Manubalaya Vajrasava Dvena Patishta Dhridami Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Supusho Me Bhava Anarakta Me Bhava Sarvasati Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shriya Kuru Hum Ahahaha Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tattakata Vajrama Me Mudra Vajram Bhava Mahasamaya Sarva Aumbe Om Vajrasava Samaya Manubhalaya Vajrasava Dveno Patishta Dridami Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Anurakta Me Bhava Sarvasiti Me Prayacha Sarva Karmasucha Me Chitam Shriya Kuru Hum Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tattakata Vajrama Me Mudra Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya Sava Ahve Om Vajrasava Zamaya Manopalaya Vajrasava Dvena Patishta Dhrido Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Anarakta Me Bhava Sarvasati Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shriya Kuru Hum Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gada Vajrama Me Mucha Vajra Bhava Maha Zamaya Sarva Aube Om Vajrasava Zamaya Manubhalaya Vajrasava Dvina Patishta Dhrida Me Bhava Sutosho Me Bhava Suposho Me Bhava Amarakta Me Bhava Sarvasati Me Prayacha Sarva Karma Sucha Me Chitam Shriya Kuru Hum Ho Bhagavan Sarva Tata Gata Vajrama Me Mudja Vajrabhava Maha Samaya Sava Ahumbe Let us now contemplate the six syllable wishing love. Oopsie. Now we come, we close with Tikle's um, Bliss Drop Emptiness, the second of two silent meditations. That this helps us to transcend our grasping tendencies. I'm sorry, I'm going to replace this with the word synonym craving. There we go. Less confusion that way. So let us chant this triplet, this set of three lines, um, 16 times. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold footpath path of the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path of the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path of the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path of the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path of the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please bend with this heart mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. 
Lama, please one with this hold mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Lama, please one with this hold mind that I may master the eightfold path for the benefit of all. Let us consider the iconography of this image. Their nudity reminds us of the vulnerability of mindfulness. Their translucence reminds us that as we relax into our exhalation, all that we noticed during the previous inhalation could feel as non graspable as a vast empty void. Their beauty reminds us that mindfulness and meditation are the keys that unlock the door to love. The stability with which he sits reminds us of centeredness. The abandon with which she sports reminds us of spontaneity. As we breathe in, we could silently and mentally recite the sensory verb feel. And as we exhale, we could silently and mentally recite the hyphenated adjective emptiness.
Let us seal this morning's practice with five sets of well wishes. May all minds be forms and lots be as wise, loving, healthy, and fortunate as time in minds real or imagined, suitable mundra archetype and paradise. May all beings like diamond mind master the eightfold path as well as liberate all others. May all beings practice of kind communication, conduct in calmness, less spontaneous and uncontrived. At the very end of each being's life, may we take our immediate and auspicious rebirth. Master the Buddha's path, and then help all others do likewise. May everyone be free from suffering, may everyone be happy. May no one be separated from thy happiness. May everyone have balance from the tyranny of hating, craving, and clinging freed. If you feel that I have earned it, you could type something in the chat window. You could give this live stream a thumbs up. You could share it with a friend, or you could simply support this channel on Patreon. Either way, in approximately two and a quarter hours, I, ret I intend to return to um, lead today's mid-morning meditation. Until then. May you and yours be happy and healthy. And if you are as geeky as me, this is the way.